Hello. Today's video is going to be looking at some more aspects of circles, as well as looking at circles and some properties of their tangents. So our first one, we have a circle with center K. We want to find LM. So we want to find this segment starting at L and going all the way to M. So I want to find out what the length of that piece is going to be. When I look, I see that I was given a right angle. Just finishing up on our right triangle trig unit, we know that that can lead us to some helpful things. I want to create a right triangle. So what I'm going to do is think about what we've talked about with circle basics. I see from K to the outside, this is 15. Well, that's a radius. And remember, we know that all radii in a circle are congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in another radius. And because I know all radii are congruent, going from K to L, this has to be 15 as well. Because every single radius in my circle, no matter where I draw it, I could draw it anywhere. I could draw it over here. Anywhere I draw a radius, every single radius in that circle is going to be 15. So that's going to give me 15. Now I see from here to here, this is also a radius, which means that also has to be 15. I'm given that this small little piece down here is 6. So right here, this has to be 9. Because if the whole radius is 15 and the bottom part is 6, what's left over is 9. Now we're getting somewhere. So now if I just concentrate on my right triangle over here, I have two sides of my triangle, which means I can solve for x using the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got x squared plus 9 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. So x squared plus 81 equals 225. We're going to move that 81 over. x squared equals 144. We square root. And yes, that would technically be plus or minus 12. But x is representing an actual segment length. And we know that our segments can't be negative, so our answer is just going to be a positive 12. Now here, that gives us part of what we want, but I have nothing over here. I could do the exact same thing, exact same process on the other side, but this is a new theorem. And that new theorem says that if a radius is perpendicular to a chord. So a chord is any segment in the circle that doesn't go through the center. So M is on the circle, L is on the circle, that's a chord. So if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, which it is, we were given that it was perpendicular right there, then that radius is going to bisect the chord. And we can go the other direction as well. If I'm given it's bisected, then I know it has to be perpendicular. So whichever one you're given, that allows you to assume the other one. So if this is 12, this has to be 12 over here as well. So my segment LM, I have two segments of 12, giving us 24. So the chord length of LM is 24. All right, so let's get into our tangent properties. What we know, and what's going to be really important, is that the tangent, and a tangent means that it's going to touch the outside of the circle just one time. The tangent is going to be perpendicular to the radius. And that perpendicular relationship is going to come up over and over again. And we're going to use that perpendicular relationship to apply our right triangle trig. So here, the 16 is the tangent because this segment of 16 is intercepting my circle at one spot. 
Here is my radius, because it's going from the center of the circle to the outside, which means that the tangent and the radius are perpendicular. That allows me to look at this piece as a right triangle, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to do the Pythagorean theorem over and over and over again. So the Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus leg squared. So here's the leg. Remember, the legs are the two pieces that connect that right angle. Leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. So when I look at this, though, it appears as though I have a problem. I'm given that this segment out here is 8. Well, 8's not the length of the whole hypotenuse, so we have to use some more properties that we've learned about. A radii. Remember, all radii are congruent. Here's a radius, and here's a radius, because they're both coming from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So if this is x, this is x as well, which means that the hypotenuse is x plus 8. We're adding those two segments together. So now we have our hypotenuse squared. So we've got x squared plus 256. Now remember over here that this is x plus 8 squared. That means it's x plus 8 times x plus 8. You have to distribute and multiply all of those pieces out. So x times x is x squared x times 8 is 8x plus 8x. 8 times 8 is 64. So that's giving us x squared plus 16x, because we have those two 8s in the middle, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 64. So you're probably freaking out right now, being like, oh, I have to factor. But I see that I have an x squared over here, and I have an x squared over there. So when I go to move those over, they actually end up canceling each other out, so it's not that bad. So we've got 256 is equal to 16x plus 64. We move the 64 over. We get 192 equals 16x. We divide by 16, and we find that x is going to be equal to 12. So not bad at all. All right, number three, again, we are going to utilize tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So here is my tangent. That 30 is representing that tangent segment. My radius is 16. So those two pieces are perpendicular, forming that right angle. So again, our Pythagorean theorem, we've got our leg squared plus our leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. We have that same problem we did last time. This segment right here on the outside is x. We need to find the length of the entire hypotenuse. Well, here's two radii, so if that's 16, then this is 16. So the whole radius or the whole hypotenuse is x plus 16. So we're going to square that quantity. That gives us 256 over here plus 900. Don't forget that that x plus 16 means that we are foiling or distributing that piece out. So x times x is x squared plus 16x plus 16x plus 256. Adding those two middle terms in the middle gives us x squared plus 32x plus 256. This time it doesn't work out as nicely, because on the left-hand side we can add those pieces together to give us 1,156, and there was no x squared to cancel out. So I'm going to have to factor. We move this over. We get 0 equals x squared plus 32x minus 900. So remember, we can't factor until it's set equal to 0. So when I go to factor here, I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply the outside and add to the middle. So we want to multiply to 900 and negative 900 and add to a positive 32. 
So we set it up for a factory. Multiply to the outside, add to the middle. Those two numbers are going to be 50 and a negative 18. If you double check, a positive 50 times a negative 18 is a negative 900. A positive 50 minus 18 gives you a positive 32. So we set each piece equal to 0. And we get x is equal to a negative 50. x minus 18 equals to 0. We get x equals 18. Now if I look back at my diagram, x is representing a segment length. Can't be negative. So x is going to be equal to 18. That wasn't very fun, was it? Well, you may be mad at me now, but there's a shortcut. Probably wanted me to show you that from the beginning. But another way we can do this, and this shortcut doesn't always work. But remember, if I'm doing Pythagorean theorem, all I need are two sides of a right triangle. So I'm going to pretend like I don't know anything about that hypotenuse. This is my unknown hypotenuse C. So we've got leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, which is the same thing we did before. I'm just going to pretend like I don't know x and I don't know 16. 16 squared and 30 squared we did over here. We found that was 1,156. We square root and we find that C is equal to 34. So what that's telling us is that this whole hypotenuse is 34. But we know that radii are congruent. So if the whole thing's 34 and this part's 16, we find x by doing 34 minus 16, which is 18. So you have two ways that you could approach that problem. One is a little bit less work than the other, but you have to be able to recognize that shortcut. All right, our last problem, more tangents here. So this tangent theorem says if two tangents are drawn from the same point, so this is that same point, outside of the circle, then these tangents are congruent. They're tangents because they're only touching the circle at one spot. So two tangents drawn from the same point outside the circle have to be congruent. So if these two segments are congruent, all we do is set them equal to each other. Now I've got the 10x and 4x. I always move the smaller x to keep my x positive. 10 minus 4 is 6x. We want to move that 22 over. 6x is equal to 36. Divide by 6 and we find x is equal to 6. And we are all done with our video for today.